I finally succumbed to the urge and made my second eBay purchase this year, a vintage cast iron waffle iron. Actually, this is the top in the back. There we go. And voila. So here we have it, a Stover waffle iron. This meant it was time to build a new electrolysis tank and clean this piece up. It's actually pretty easy to build an electrolysis setup. We start out with a lot of water. In this case, 20 gallons of water. That is about 20 gallons. Now, for every five gallons of water, we only need about one third of a cup of washing soda. And in this case, too much is not always better than not enough. So we should roughly measure it out. One, two, three, and four. Now we need a piece of sacrificial metal. The electrolysis process will cause this piece to corrode while it removes the rust and corrosion from the piece being cleaned up. It may not be professional, but like they say, whatever works. The negative charge will connect to the cast iron while the positive charge goes to the sacrificial piece. I guess we will start with the base first. This isn't really so bad, it just has some uh, sticky buildup on it, so with any luck, this should not take very long. The black or um, positive um, anode goes onto the cast iron, and the cast iron goes into our electrolyte solution to make sure it's completely submerged. And most importantly, make sure it doesn't touch the other anode. It's okay to connect the black connector directly to the pan itself, but if we submerge the red connector in this solution, then that will also become rusty and corroded. So we connect the red connector to a wire, which will bring the current into the tank to the sacrificial piece. And now we relax and wait. And it's been about five hours, which I think is all that really needed because it actually looked in pretty good condition. As you can see, this E-Tank is definitely working because it looks, well, for lack of a better word, yucky. And that, of course, is from all of the uh, residue coming off the surface of that pan. All right. First, we cut the power, of course. But yeah, I'd say it has uh, done a pretty good job. We could almost certainly scrub the rest of this off in the sink. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And now for Barkeeper's Friend. Looks like I was mistaken in that it could probably use at least a uh, few more hours. Looks like most of it came off, but there is still some residue, so we might as well go all the way and give it a full treatment. This looks about as good as I can get it, and probably about as good as I need to get it. So let's dry it off and grease it. It doesn't have to be bone dry, just dry enough to allow us to spread on a layer of grease. A little bit of Crisco. And 
putting it under a very low heat. Again, not to season it, but to dry it off and evaporate any water that is uh, still on the metal. So it seems like it took about nine hours in the E-Tank to uh, get the base done, which means based on that, I am going to do the, uh, this first paddle here uh, overnight. And then the second paddle uh, probably for tomorrow and the afternoon. Well, these bubbles, it's like fizzing. However, this is looking pretty nice. All we have to do is scrub it off. A little bit up here and a little bit down there. If you think cleaning a typical cast iron skillet is tough, wait until you try cleaning one of these. Getting the rust out of all of these crevices was a real pain. Then we do our best to cover every bit of the surface with Crisco to prevent flash rust. Heat this up a little bit, especially to melt that Crisco and give it a coating. There we go. There's a fair amount of melted Crisco in here, but again, I'm not seasoning it yet. I'm just being sure to coat every bit of this to prevent any flash rust. And finally, the last one. Ah, here is the last piece. It's been in there for about the past nine hours. And let's get this thing cleaned up. And let's coat it and dry it off. I'd say that's certainly hot enough. And once it's cooled down, we will get to some real seasoning. And the hard part is mostly finished. Now we heat these pieces to 200 degrees in the oven, then we can apply the first coating of seasoning. Since these pieces are hot, it's much easier to cover them with Crisco this time. And after this, we wipe off the extra oil. This is important because there will still be a thin layer of oil on the surface, and that's all we need. It goes back into the hot oven, and we do the same for the other two pieces. Rub on Crisco, then wipe it off. Next, we heat the oven to 300 degrees and give it a second wipe. This actually removes more extra oil that we didn't get the first time.
Finally, we heat the oven to 400 degrees and let it bake on for an hour and a half. After about 90 minutes, we turn off the heat and let it cool for about half an hour. And then we coat it with grease for the second coat of seasoning. Two. Once again, simply use the basting brush. The pieces are still very hot, so it's easy to bring the oven back up to 300, then 400. And then we season it a third time, and finally this waffle iron is ready. There's just one last thing to scrub the steel coil on the handle with Barkeeper's Friend to get it good and shiny. And now our Stover waffle iron is looking as good as it did a hundred years ago. Which means at last, it's time to make some waffles. Mm -hmm.